Hi, I'm Craig Phillips. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build your own bed box. Now, I'm going to use hardwood to build mine, but of course, you can use softwood. I'm going to show you a couple of different designs here that I've already made earlier. One has got a kind of an apex style here and two sections to the roof with a back plate that can be fixed to a wall. And then this particular one is my favourite one with a pitch sloping roof right here. Just one section on it. Again, with a back stand standing up to be able to pin to the wall. Small little holes cut out in it here, and then I'm gonna put a little piece of dowling on there so the bear can land on and actually go in. Now the tools you're gonna to require to build your bird box is a chop saw, a set square, cordless drills with various different drill bits, clamps, tape measure, a flat spade piece drill bit, and also your hammer. Now I'm gonna fix the bird boxes together using my compressor and a nail gun. If you don't happen to have a compressor and a nail gun, it's not a problem. You can just use panel pins with your hammer. Now I'm gonna build my bird box out of offcuts of hardwood. In fact, it's oak wood. You can use softwood or hardwood, it really doesn't matter. I've recently done some skating board and we've got lots of little small pieces, so I thought I'd put it to good use and create some bird boxes with it. Now, I've bought this directly off the shelf. It's 170 millimeters wide by 20 millimeters deep. If you go and buy yourself a full length of timber, whether it's hard or softwood, it might be a little bit thicker, it might be a little bit wider, it really doesn't matter. Stick to your drawings, set out your sizes on there, and then you can cut a kit of parts. I'm gonna start off by cutting the largest bit, which is this back section here of the bird box. Now, I've set mine at 300 millimeters, so, as I say, I've got plenty of offcuts. Surely one of these is big enough for 300. There we go. I'm doing all my cuts with my chop saw. Okay, so that's my back piece there, standing at 300, same as that. The next piece I'm going to cut now is these side pieces here. And my side pieces come up about 230 if I remember rightly. Yeah, about 230 at its highest point, but then of course we cut it at a 45 degree to create this shape here. And it's only 100 millimeters wide. And when you're using your chop saw, it's always wise, certainly when you're cutting hardwood, not just cut straight into it, but glide the blade up and down, just taking a couple of millimetres off at a time, you get a lot smoother and safer cut. And also with small bits, it's wise to clamp them down as well, hold them into place. Okay, we've got this now at the height, 230. Now what I want to do is cut my width at 100 millimetres on my side. 100 millimetres here and here. Draw a quick line through it. Now we know this is 230 millimetres in length. My saw will only allow me to cut 210 millimetres, so we'll have to cut this twice. Okay, so I've got my width now. I'm going to set this at 45. Right for my very top point of 230. Give me a little guideline at 45 there. So that's my side piece now that goes in here. So I'm going to cut another one of them, exactly the same for the opposite side. Now the next piece is going to be my front piece here. It is at 130 millimeters on my measurements. However, I have to cut it at a 45 degree angle on there because when we look up along here, we will see when the roof panel sits on it, 
we have our side panels like this. That front piece, which is going to mount over this edge here, has got to butt up to the actual roof part of the bear box. Perfect. And that is the shape that we want to sit right up underneath on our roof area. This base now should be fitting in here. Yep. We've got a back, we've got two sides, we've got the front, we've got the base. Now the next stage is to put a roof on here which we want hanging over but as these are standard square cut on these edges when that slides up on our 45 degree angle we'll be left with a gap here so we do have to cut that the same as what we did on there. Okay, now he should fit on there and give us that 30 millimeter hangover, which is what we want off here. So when the rain falls down onto the roof, it simply drips off below. The next stage is to start to fit all these together. So now I'm going to assemble the kit apart. I'm just going to place, put a little line on the inside here and here so we know where to apply the glue. Place this on top. Now here. Place the other piece on top or bottom. Over here, so we'll have a little line of glue. This end. Same again there. It's only a water-based glue that. I'm using so it's not going to be any harmful to the wildlife. Lining that up, just making sure I've got a nice flush finish on here, a nice flush finish on there. Put a clamp over the edge of it there, holding them into position. Just making sure he's as flush as you can get him. Now, of course, if you haven't got a compressor and a nail gun, you can just use your panel pins, sunken head ones, hammer them in so they're nice and flush to there. Now, I can lift this up, turn it to this position, back to my clamp. Just holding that down safely. Now, before we go fixing our roof into position, we need to cut out a hole for the bed to actually enter in the center here. And we do this by using a 32 millimeter flat spade piece for your drill. Five is our middle center here and then you don't quite want it in the full center of this a little bit further up to the top so I've got a 32 mil spade piece I'm gonna go for about there ah really is tough trying to bore out a large hole that 32 millimeters through hardwood it'll be a little bit easier if you use softwood okay so while I've got this now clamped down into position the next thing I want to do now is get myself a small piece of dowel drill a smaller hole just on the underside of it and stick the dowel in standing out proud that allows the bed to actually land on it to be able to get into the hole 
seven millimeters wide, but I haven't drilled right the way through the actual unit itself and come through. Just left it about a millimeter or two short. Tiny bit of glue in there. And then hopefully this little wooden dowel should, with a bit of persuasion, push nice and tight in there. And once that glue is dried, that will be perfect. Okay, so now that allows That allows the bed, of course, to land onto there and enter into the box. Now, fitting the roof, some people like to put hinges on there so they can lift this up and keep an eye on what's happening inside. I prefer not to. I prefer to fix them down, put them high up in the trees or the side of the house and let nature get on with it. So, I'm just going to line mine up. Yep, all fits perfect. Little bit of glue right the way around that edge. So we've got no access in there and then I'm going to pin it down a little bit. It's quite important that cut edge as well which is going to sit flush up to the back wall. We get plenty of glue on there because we don't want any water running through. Now this I'm going to lie down here. It can be a little bit tricky nailing this in. Again with Using my compressor, I'm always going to clamp them down. Now the last thing we need to do on our bear box is to just drill a couple of holes in the top back wall of the unit to allow you to pop some screws through and fix it either to the wall or the tree. So I'm just going to pop a couple of little four millimeter holes in the very top here. There we go, holes are in place, all we need to do now is give this a little bit of a sand all the way around the edges and fix it into position and that's how easy it is to make your bear box. If you want to see any more how-to videos please visit the website silverlinetools.com